This is Adventist World Radio Ghana. Voice, Voice of, of Hope. hope. Ghana. Voice of Hope. Voice of hope. This is Daylight Magazine, and under this segment, we have Reflections, Youth Corner, and Moment of Truth. I am Kwejo Ansedu, and I'm presenting this with Hannah B. Nyakun. How are you doing today, Hannah? I'm doing well, and you? I'm doing well as well. I hope, dear listener, you enjoy our programs. Stay tuned. Ghana, voice of hope. This old house wants to be my children. This old house wants to be my wife. This old house was a home and comfort as we fought the storms of life. This old house wants to ring with laughter. This old house heard many shouts. Now she trembles in the darkness when the night wind walks about. Ain't gonna need this house no longer. Ain't gonna need this house no more. Ain't got time to fix the shingles. Ain't got time to fix the doors. Ain't got time no hinges or to fix no window pane. Ain't gonna need this house no longer. I'm getting ready to meet the saints. This old house is getting shaky. This old house is getting old. This old house lets in the rain and this old house lets in the cold. On my knees I'm getting chilly, but I feel no fear of pain. Cause I see an angel picking through the broken window pane. Ain't gonna need this house no longer. Ain't gonna need this house no more. Ain't got time to fix the shingles. Ain't got time to fix the doors. Ain't got time for the hinges or to fix the window panes. Ain't gonna need this house no longer. I'm getting ready to meet the same. Well, it's a great, great morning, your first day in heaven when you stroll down the Golden Avenue. There are mansions left and right, and you thrill with every sight, and the saints are always smiling, saying, how do you do? Oh, it's a great, great morning, your first day in heaven when you realize your worrying days are through. You'll be glad you were not idle, took time to read your Bible, it's a great, great morning for you. Well, I had a dream, I must confess, I hated to awake. Wake. I dreamed you was an angel, but let the great belly gate. Uh, Peter said, well, hello there, where have you been? We got your mansion ready, so come right on in. And then it rang for an angel. Oh, do you have a mirror image? I hope you do. Come join me as we take a purposeful contemplation of our lives. This is the program Reflection. Seeing others the right way. The mark, he is profitable for them. Take mark, he is profitable for the ministry, 2 Timothy 4.11. When John Mark decided to take time off to visit his family, it didn't sit too well with Paul. Later, when Barnabas wanted to take John Mark to their next mission trip, Paul exploded. The contention became so sharp, they parted from one another. Barnabas took Mark and sailed to Cyprus, but Paul chose Silas. But the story doesn't end there. Later, an older and wiser Paul, who had learned to add grace to his grit, writes, For Demas hath forsaken me, having loved this present world. Take Mark and bring him with thee, for he is profitable to me for the ministry. There are three important lessons here for you. 1. Always be willing to give someone a second chance. After all, that's what God does for you. Now, in extending grace, you can get hurt and disappointed. But if you are going to be Christ-like, it's a risk you must take. 2. Don't measure everybody else by your standards and goals. The truth is, they may not be called to do what you're called to do, or they may have been called to do it in a different way. Don't make your personal preferences a precondition for loving, accepting, and working with someone. 3. When you look at the best in others, you usually find it. The Bible says, we have this treasure in earthen vessels. So every time you meet the treasure, you bump into the earthen vessel. Don't allow that to devalue the treasure or your responsibility to look for it. Motivated people will rise to meet your expectations. God bless you. Come 
listener, this segment is about the youth and their lives in today's world. The program is Youth Corner. Aimlessly beneath the barren sky Leave it to me, I'll lead you home So afraid that you will not be found It won't be long before your sun goes down Just leave it to me, I'll lead you home Dear friend, welcome again to Youth Corner. We are still dealing with the youth and culture. For some time, we have been looking at this very topic extensively. We have discussed it, looking at the definition, how it influences one's behavior and personality, how it can affect one's faith. If you are a Christian and you are faced with a culture that is contrary to your faith, how you do have to deal with it and all that. Last time we, we looked at the similarities and differences, we realized that there are so many similarities. The differences are also there, but they are, they are few when compared to the similarities. To end our discussion on this very important topic, we, would want, we, we want to look at how Christians can positively influence culture because culture is dynamic. And then we take our last words from our wonderful uh, panelists. To help me today to in a discussion are... Teaching assistant, Valley University. Matela Tete, teaching assistant, University of Ghana. Francis Sajikum, Valley University lecturer. Jimai Masari, student, Valley University. And I'm still your host, Oliver Ishen. So let's go straight to this question. In fact, you're all welcome to this program. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. How can the Christian youth use Christian values to positively influence culture, since culture is dynamic? Indeed, we said last time that there are so many things that um, Christianity and then our traditional culture as Africans move together, you know. And so in that sense, there is not much as far as the influence are concerned.
that stands out clear is the fact that culture is indeed dynamic and Christians should take opportunity of that word dynamic, that the dynamism of culture and influence it for good. Okay. Yeah, Matilda. Yeah, I think since we are social beings and we live in society, we should be abreast with time. That's notwithstanding, we should adjust to changing times but still hold on to unchanging principles. Wow, that's great. Indeed. Because we have to hold on to unchanging principles and as we change with time, we have to be able to discern between what is good and what is right so that we can hold on to our principles as Christians. To conclude, I would say there are different people in this world and everybody has a culture and everyone's culture is special. So we shouldn't do our way or we shouldn't shun anybody's culture because everybody's culture is special. But we should make sure that it doesn't have any negative effects on the individual. Dear friend, thank you so much for joining us on this very wonderful discussion. We believe that it has been a blessing to you and you start influencing people positively wherever you live. I've been doing a discussion with... Kujan Sendu. Matlatete. Francis Ajekun. Njimai Masai. And this has been your host, Olivation. Adventist World Radio Ghana, Valley View University, P.O. Box, AF595, Adenta, Accra, Ghana, West Africa. Or if you have access to the internet, send us an email through radio at vvu.edu.gh. Or better still, you can call us on 030-7051-058. The number again, 030-7051-058. There's no need for standing up for the right unless you've gone stand up against the wrong. Tell me how you're going to ever stop of being weak unless you make your mind up to be strong. You've got to do right because it won't be long. It won't be long. Let me tell you that it's easy to hate your enemy And it's just as easy to love your friends Tell me you will have to live the life The Bible tells you you've got to let the love of God come in Well, you've got to do right Cause it won't be long, it won't be long Don't you want to love him better? Don't you want to love him more? Can't you even say you're knocking? He's knocking at your door. So don't you want to make haste to me to make her before you've got to deal with the undertaker? He will take you right now. If you are willing, don't you know the Bible is fulfilling? You've got to do right. Cause it won't be long, it won't be long You've got to do right Oh, it won't be long, it won't be long You've got to do right, oh, holy the life You've got to do right, oh, holy the life You've got to do Cherished right, listener, this is the moment of truth Where truth is presented with precision and exactness 
enjoy this encounter of a lifetime. I want to share with you the word of God. Let us pray. Father in heaven, hear our prayer. As I pray, I commit my listener unto you. Be with us all in Jesus' name. From John chapter 19, verse 30, when Jesus had received the vinegar, he said, it is finished. What precipitated Jesus Christ to say he had finished? When God had created the universe, there was still wanting a creature of higher intelligence, capable of wisdom and holiness. God, therefore, created man out of material vehicle. And this material vehicle, that was Adam. He gave him the liberty to do what was right or what was wrong. Had he forced Adam, Adam would have been like a stalk of a tree, incapable of thought, incapable of holiness, incapable of movement. But God gave him that liberty. And Adam chose to do the right or the wrong. He lost the moral image of God by eating the tree of disobedience. And Adam, having lost the moral image of God, entitled all his posterity, all his offspring to suffering, to hardships, and finally to death. God himself had decreed that all living creatures should reproduce their kinds. Fishes in the sea had to reproduce fishes in the sea. Birds of the skies had to reproduce birds of the skies. Animals had to reproduce their kinds. And Adam, a sinful human being, had to reproduce somebody of his kind. So Adam had to reproduce somebody of his kind. And therefore, there was a problem in all the world. God, therefore, saw the sins of man. And then what God did was that he provided a universal remedy for a universal sin. And this universal remedy is Jesus Christ. Praise God. So when Jesus came to this world of sin... He said, I've come to do all what has been written about me. So Jesus came to do the will of God. But he, Jesus, a young man of 33 years, was able to accomplish his mission. And when he was hanged on the cross, his last message was, it is finished. It is finished. Many noble men could not complete their earthly mission. But he, Jesus, at this tender age, was able to complete his mission. What had he completed? He was to heal the brokenhearted. He was to heal the sick. He was to defeat Satan and conquer the world. He was to show us the kingdom of God. Jesus Christ had become a vicarious sacrifice. So Jesus had been a universal remedy, dealing away with all the universal sin. Do you say it is finished when you have all the wealth in this world? Do you say that you have finished when you have completed your education? Do you say that you have finished when you have graduated? Do you say you have finished when your financial circumstances are okay? When do you hope to say that you have finished? Do you want to say you have finished when you have the best of man, the best of woman in marriage? When do you hope to say that you have finished? Paul uh, said in Corinthians chapter 13, verse 13, that three things exist. That is faith, love, and a hope. But love is the greatest. So today, I'm speaking to you, dear listener, on one of these things. That is hope. Without hope, then we have a problem. When do you hope to say that you have finished? Paul felt that he was okay in the beginning, but he was able to say he had finished when, whether objectively or subjectively, he had met Jesus Christ on the road of Damascus. Having known Jesus, then he forgot about all and then pushed forward, forgot about what he had done in the past, and then was able to say he had finished. Paul was able to say he had finished when he had fully embraced Jesus Christ, when he had fully yielded unto him. When do you hope to yield to Jesus? Is it too great a sacrifice to yield all to Jesus Christ? No. He sacrificed himself for humanity. 
And do you find it difficult to, to yield yourself to Jesus? Well, all the material things have their proper sphere in life. But in matters of salvation, they are not powerful. In matters of salvation, they are useless. If we gain the whole world and then lose our salvation, lose our soul, what profit have we? we when we have Jesus, then of course we can say we have finished. Paul was able to say that he had fought a good fight, he had kept the faith, and then what was left for him was the crown that was waiting for him. When do you hope to say you have finished? Now, things are turning around. Everything indicates that the world is coming to an end. You need to have a sense of the coming of Jesus Christ so that you can say you have finished. Everything in this world we are striving for is okay. But one thing is very important. One thing is needful. One thing is essential. One thing is something that we cannot do away with. There was this girl called Helen Madison in America at the age of 19 years. He had won three national championships and then 23 golden medals. But unfortunately, she had a breast cancer and she was withdrawn to a secluded place. People want to know a lot more about this Helen Madison. But whenever journalists went to her home, in fact, they even found it difficult to get somebody to take them to where Helen Madison was. A Christian journalist was able to see this Helen Madison and when he presented the good news about Jesus Christ unto her, Helen Madison her soul revived. She became happy. She wept and wept and wept and wept. And there and then said that, oh, she was happy to find a resting place for her soul because she had found Jesus Christ. There is one thing needful in this world, and that is Jesus Christ. When you have him, you have all. Whatever you are doing at this time when the world is getting to an end, you need to have Jesus Christ. Then, of course, you can say you have finished. He is the creator of the universe. Jesus Christ is one of the persons of the Trinity. Jesus Christ is all in all. The omnipotent, the omnipresence, the omniscience, and all in all. You can say you have finished when you have Jesus Christ. Brother, I want to recommend our Savior unto you. He came and died for humanity. He resurrected. He went to heaven and then he will come back. Have him. And of course, you can say you have finished. I'm Pastor Odro. Get a word of God and to go on well with you. Amen. This is our address, Adventist World Radio Ghana, Valley View University, P.O. Box, AF595, Adenta, Accra, Ghana, West Africa. Or if you have access to the internet, send us an email through radio at vvu.edu.gh. Or better still, you can call us on 030-7051-058. The number again, 030-7051-058. I am blessed being a part of this program. Hannah, what about you? The same here. So I believe, listener, you did too. This has been once again, Kwejo and Sendu. And Hannah B. Nyaku. God bless you. you.